Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So today I'm going to go through my best five calculator hacks that are going to save you tons of marks in the exam and also save you tons of time. So if you have a Casio, so a class whiz or even one of the older versions, you're not going to want to miss this video because it can help you solve so many questions in the IGCSE exam. Right, let's get started. Okay, so our first hack here is that you can check your fraction calculations. Now, this is actually really important on 0580 maths because according to my predictions, you can check those out above. This kind of question comes up all the time. Now it says, of course, without using a calculator, so you have to show all your working, but there's nothing stopping you actually putting this into your calculator and checking you have the right answer. Now, if we go to our calculator here, so I'm using this version of the class Wiz, so the 991EX calculator here, you can just simply use your fraction button here, so we can type this in as 1 over 3, then we have divided, fraction button 7 over 6, and it will follow bid mass here, so plus 1 over 5. And again, you can check in the exam that you're getting 17 out of 35 and guarantee you have those three or four marks for this particular question. So a very important hack. Again, you can use this as a double check. Number two is saving yourself time with these table of values questions, particularly on paper four. I'm sure you've practiced this in class where they give you the complete the table of values for a particular function, and then they have to fill in these particular values. You can speed this process up a lot by using the table function. So if you go to our calculator here, if I go and go to the normal menu, you need to be familiar with this particular menu. We go down to number nine here. So number nine is table. You can either click nine or you can use the arrow keys to go to table like so. Now we're going to type in our function. So we're going to type in the x squared plus 5x plus 3. Notice there's an x button. You can also use alpha x as well to get the same thing. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 3, press equals, g of x we leave alone, we don't put anything there. Now it's going to ask us for our table range here, notice we're going from minus 6 to 1, so I'm going to type in minus 6 to 1. Now it asks us for the step, so this means how much are we going up in here. Notice we're going up in ones, minus six to minus five to minus four and so on. We press equals and notice it generates the table for us. Now minus six and nine we already know, minus five and three, uh, minus four, minus one. So we just type in these numbers, we just write them in, we get three here, we have minus three here. Let's check the last ones. So we just scroll down. So we have 5 uh, minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 minus 1 we agree with minus 3 minus 1 3 and 9. So we can type in these values 3 and 9. Notice how much time you have saved by doing a question like this. I'm going to show you one of my other hacks here. We can actually use the calculator to solve quadratics and we'll talk about that right at the end. Number three is checking a linear equation, solving a question. So our three hacks here are going to focus on the equation solving part of it. Now you have to be a little bit careful with using this. In order to get it to solve, we have to make the right hand side zero. So here, the opposite of minusing t is plusing t. So we get 15t plus t, that's 16t plus 8 is equal to, well, just 4, because this cancels. Then we have to minus 4 from both sides. Again, we want the right-hand side 0. That gives us then 16t. 8 minus 4 is plus 4, and then equal to 0. So to use this function on the calculator, you have to make the right-hand side 0. Now, if we go to our calculator, so to this part, so we want to go to the menu function, we want to go to our normal calculating view, so number 1 here. So just this normal view here. And what we can do, think of the t as the x here. We type in 16x plus 4. Now we use the equals button up here, so alpha equals 0. 
And now at this point, we press shift and solve. You need to be looking for this solve word on your calculator. If we press this and then press equals, you'll notice it gives you x equals minus 0 0.25. So we can just write that in minus 0 0.25. Particularly for these kind of questions, as long as you're showing you're working, that's really important. But it's a really good double way of checking I've actually got the right answer. If I do this with normal equation solving, I get 16t equals minus 4, t equals minus 4 over 16, which is the same as minus 0 0.25. Again, as long as you're using the method that's absolutely fine to get the two marks, but it's a great way of checking you're getting the right answer. Hack number four is actually solving simultaneous equations. Again, often comes up in both paper two and paper four. So we have our simultaneous equation here. So we are on here like so. We go to menu. This time we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to the menu A here. So we're going to equation slash function press equals, and it gives us two choices. We're going to look at both in this particular video. We want the simul equation uh, version. So we go to number one, number of unknowns where we have X and Y. So we have two unknowns. And now we can just write the equation in. So we've got three X and we've got a minus two for Y. That's equal to 19. Again, you just type it in as it is there. So we have one X plus 1y is equal to 3. Press the equals button, and we get x equals 5. So we'll write this in, x equals 5, and then y is going to have to be minus 2. Okay, your calculator can tell this for you as well. x is 5 equals y is minus 2. Of course, as it says in the question here, you must show all your working. But again, this is a great way to check, okay, have I got the right answers for my simultaneous equation? Again, it's gonna make you feel very good when you come out of the exam and go, I've got those three marks. Now on to a quadratic equation solving question. And even with the really difficult questions on the paper, it can still help you a lot. So here we need to do it by substitution. Again, not going to go through this in too much detail in this video. So we have y equals 2x minus 3. So wherever I see an x, I can replace it. Or wherever I see a y, sorry, I can replace this with a 2x minus 3. So I get then 2x minus 3 is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 21. Again, as always with quadratic equations, we want one side to be 0. So what I've done is flip the equation here. Then I'm going to minus 2x and add 3 on both sides. That gives me x squared minus 11x. And we're adding 3, so we get plus 24 is equal to 0. At this point, I can then go to my calculator and it will actually solve this for me. Again, you need to show you're working, but it's a great way of checking. So I have my calculator here. Again, we're going to go to the menu setting, equation and function like before. This time we're going to use number two. So we're going to use the polynomial function. And again, polynomial degree. So do I have an x squared or an x cubed or x to the power of four? In this case, my highest power is x squared. So I click on two. And notice we just write it in in this general form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So my ax, so I have 1x squared, I have minus 11x, I have 24, I press equals, I press equals again, and it gives me the two answers here. So x1, the first answer, is equal to 8, and the second answer is equal to 3. So I then know x is 8 and x is 3. Again, double, double warning here. Again, this is for checking your answer. You need to show you're working for these questions to get all the marks. But again, a great feeling that I definitely have the right answer before I move on to working out the Y values here. Now, if you're not sure about the exams coming up very, very soon, then I suggest you check out the two videos in front of you. The first one is my predictions for the 0580 course. And then as a predicted paper two, this is my best guess of the questions or style of questions that will appear on your paper.